Hey, Paul, how are you? You are the one and only today, so ask me your questions. Um, let's go through the script real fast, and I want to get into direct marketing. You don't have to answer this, Paul, since I obviously, I, yeah, that's when we go to the polls. You don't have to answer these. <laughs> uh, I just want to know if you would approve the loan. How I did the case study is, yeah, but there has to be conditions. Um, I, these are complicated. I did that on purpose, uh, and it has to be tweaked. The purpose of this is the BDO must be involved in crafting the loan. Obviously, the underwriter is the one who has the final say, but the more the BDO can structure a loan properly, the better the chances for success. Question number two, would you type, would you carry, this is where we're getting at some type of seller carryback. Um, oh, and welcome, Steve. Thanks for joining us. And um, go back to the first question. Did Steve see the first question, Joseph? I asked this question, Steve. Yeah, don't worry about it. I just want to make sure that the BDO, the better you do your job, the better for success of getting a loan approved in terms of structure. Whenever you have a business acquisition, those are difficult to do. I always believe in skin in the game from the seller. I think that's important. And I asked that question, would you require some type of seller carryback for Sam Gray? Yeah, I think, I think we need to do that. Um, that, that. That's important. That helps the loan. It helps the cash flow. It helps the commitment from the seller to help the buyer succeed. Uh, which program would you use for the guarantee? This one you guys can answer. I'd be curious if you would go Express or traditional 7A. There's no right or wrong answer. What you guys say? Split. Split. Yeah, no right or wrong. I have, I have no, um, both answers are fine. 7A requires a little bit, a traditional 7A requires a little bit more work. Um, but, but you, we may look down on our, our nose and sneer at this small loan. Hey, for these guys, it's for Sam, this is livelihood. It, it's what he's been doing all his life. Um, for, uh, for John, it's, it's going to be his dream, dream to be part of uh, Main Street, own a business. What value would you give on the equipment? There is a right answer on this one. You can go 80% um, of liquidation value. You can go 50% of book value. The, the important thing to remember on this, and this is the key, if the loan is an early default, we have to auction it off. Go, Joseph, go back to those numbers. If you say, 80% of liquidation value. 80, uh, if I can do my math right, what is that, 120000 You better get that 120000 at an auction. If you go in and your liquidator only gets 10 cents on the dollar and sells it for $15,000, $22,500, you are going to have a repair. You're going to have a problem. So if you do that, make sure you have the appropriate expert that you've worked with, that you have a relationship with, this is, yeah, I can get that money for you. And, that, and that's what it is. It's picking up the phone and saying, if I'm going to sell this stuff, what I'm going to get, and say, Bob, you're going to get 30000 then that's what I would do. I, I would go to real-world numbers as opposed to crazy percentages. Um, that's the advantage to being a specialist. If you say, you know what, I think I want to specialize in dry cleaning business acquisition loans. Then it becomes cookie cutter. You can walk in. You don't have a learning curve, and you know exactly what, how these deals should look. Uh, is that it for questions, Joseph? So we talked about week eight. You're almost there. Um, equity injection franchise, the nitty-gritty things. I, I firmly believe the more that you understand the process, and you understand the nitty-gritty of a construction loan that you know where loan, the, 
the process can blow up. I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but we did the survey a couple weeks ago. How did your year end up for the government's year ending September 30th? A number of comments surprised me, and the comments were, we're sick and tired on these lower end loans that the borrower are not giving us their information. So we have these files that are in limbo, and, and they're not progressing. Well, what happened? They went to the alternative lender. That's what happened. Someone wasn't holding their hand. And again, we can argue, I understand we make a lot more money on Franklin Brothers than we do on Graves Dry Cleaning. I understand that concept. But if you're going to be committed to do a Graves Dry Cleaning, do your job right. Hold the hand, get the paperwork, take it through the process. Don't, it's inefficient from you to gather all this stuff, to put it in underwriting. It goes to loan closing, and they don't close the loan because they're dragging their feet. And they, we had a conversation earlier on a different webinar where the borrower got $50,000 from Cabbage to buy inventory for Christmas. Well, that may seem nice and sound until the BDO did the calculation, and it's a 40% loan. They say, well, I'm only paying a $5,000 fee on that. Yeah, but you're paying it back January 15th, and we do the calculations 40%. If that had gone SBA, it would have been substantially different. And the problem is, so that, say it's only $5,000, I buy $50,000 inventory, I double my money, I can make the money. Yeah, but that $5,000, if it's SBA, and I apologize, I, my number says, let's say it's only $500, bucks, $1,000. That's $4,000 cash flow. That's strictly to the bottom line. All right, uh, week nine, I hope you enjoyed the reading materials. I know there's a lot in it. You want to go to the question? My bank doesn't do SBA, well, help me out here. Um, my bank doesn't do SBA Express, so what be the advantage to process on SBA Express? It's very simple. SBA Express, you can use your own loan documents your own underwriting standards. What you do conventionally, you do SBA Express. It's a much more simplified process. Do you need to get a separate agreement from SBA to process SBA Express loans? That's a good question. I'm assuming, I know you have the Master 750. Um, the answer is I don't know. If it is, it's a, it's a piece of paper. Talk to your local district council. Um, can you get Lance on the line real quick and ask him that? I'll, I'll find out for you. Um, I believe your bank should be doing SBA Express. In, in, in SBA Express cries out for Franklin Brothers. Here's the problem. What happens if Franklin Brothers has a cash flow problem 18 months out, two years out? If you can have an SBA Express function, it makes the option for Franklin Brothers to turn to you and not to Cabbage, not to on debt. And that's the world we are in. Once Franklin Brothers turns to these alternative lenders, and let's say they get a couple hundred thousand dollars at 40%, it's going to be a debt spiral. And you're going to be liquidating that loan three, four years out. And that's the problem with these high-priced alternative lenders. I understand the attraction. Um, I've written about it. I, I, I told the story. I do QuickBooks. And there's a company called Funbox. And one day I clicked on QuickBooks. And they say, hey, Bob, you want to advance this one of your receivables? Fine, $5,000, I played around with it. I got the money in my account the next day. I understand, and I did the calculation. It wasn't too bad. It was about 20%. I, I, I got uh, uh, 2500 bucks. I paid it back in three days. The, fee, the fees were reasonable. I understand the attraction of a small business owner to that, and that's the problem that you have. You need to be proactive to make sure that your borrowers are not being seduced by this easy money. And that's really what's going on. Um, week nine, Sorry. we talk about credit memos. Oh, I have some one more question. You can join, do a Google search for small business lenders. And there's two ways to join a group. One is it's an open join. You simply click on it and you're a member of the group. And you get all the cool stuff of the group. You can go to your preferences. And you can say, hey, send me a daily, send me a weekly for anything that happens in that group. You can also then start participating in that group. And that's what you want to do. I want to be Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. I want to join that group. And then I can start talking about small business lending issues. 
I want to specialize in real estate in the South Bay in Long Beach. I am, there's got to be a group, uh, Southern California Real Estate Association, Southern California um, developers. There's, there, there, there is some group, uh, Southern California hotel owners, um, Long Beach Chamber of Commerce. You want to join those two groups. And then you want on a, at least on a monthly basis, perhaps a weekly basis, to post something. It doesn't need to be original. Steal my stuff. Steal other people's stuff in terms of um, where I stole a, an article I'm going to put, push out next week about restaurant financing and the minimum wage. It's pretty interesting stuff on how, how, how restaurants are, are handling that. Feel free to take that, repackage it, say, hey, call and publish it, and that's what you do. This does not need to be original stuff. You want to simply establish yourself as the expert in these groups. There are other groups that are private that they have to accept you and the old story, well, they don't want me, I don't want to be in them, but usually. And, and you can handle 10 to 15 groups. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about direct marketing. My attitude, this is a different conversation than we would have had 10 years ago, my attitude is if you only have four hours a week to focus on marketing, I would, be, I would do it all on LinkedIn. I wouldn't do email. I would not do direct mail. I'm going to talk about that. But I would get your LinkedIn persona first. That's where I would put all my energy. Again, Facebook is for hobbies. It's for the grandkids' pictures. I wouldn't go there. Um, I, I, I want to establish my expertise as LinkedIn. Um, so how you market that, and, and do not go in there say, now, don't go in there and say, hey, if so, and I get these. Hey, if someone needs a loan, call me. That's not going to work. But take your, where's my iPhone, guys? Take your iPhone, go out there and videotape, go to your borrower and say, hey, tell me about the loan we just did. And have the guy talk, and, and all your borrowers, they're going to talk with passion. Three minutes. And say, um, Paul, thank you so much. I got the loan. Um, it, it allows me to buy my business. This is what I've always wanted to do. I hire five people. Uh, we make this product. We do this wonderful stuff. You then take that video and you... <laughs> you then take that video uh, and put, upload it on YouTube. And guess what? I got two guys here who know how to do this. Talk to any teenager. They know how to do it. If you need help, we'll do it for you. Upload it to YouTube and then put the link in LinkedIn. Say, hey, look at this cute interview I just did with, uh, with Sam's Dry Cleaning, with, with John who bought, who bought the, the dry cleaning. Those are very valuable. They also are something very important as well. Excuse me. They also are something very, in terms of search engine optimization. Google gives the love to videos. So these are not... These are not high school science, excuse me, high school video projects where they need to be cut, they need to be perfect. You don't need bumper music, you don't need graphics. Just give me three minutes of John talking about how wonderful you are for making me love. And you, and you post that. And having borrowers talk with passion is pretty cool. That, that is pretty cool stuff. Uh, so I hope, please spend time on LinkedIn. I, I, I think it's wonderful. Um, you can do original postings with something called Pulse. I'm experimenting with that. And you get interesting feedback. Also, what's, you get people who will comment about it. Um, so that the, the nice thing is if you want to specialize, and I want to specialize in hotel loans in Southern California, find those groups, and then you're talking to those groups. And you're not, you, it's a very specific targeted approach and you're not wasting your time with Subway franchisor out of Omaha which you could care less about. So the more targeted you get on that and LinkedIn allows you to be very targeted. Uh, week nine we talk about that. Um, I'm not asking for uh, you to go ahead and do the credit memo. That's more of the underwriting. If you want to do it fine. But I would go through on what the underwriter needs to do. Um, so we give you grades um, 
And, and the purpose of this is when you are receive a um, loan application, it, it, it very rarely will it go through as is. There needs to be tweaks. There needs to be working capital component. You need to be talking about SBA Express. Uh, there may be additional collateral. And that's the purpose of that. The, 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 uh, with Gray's is how much of a seller carryback are we going to do, or are we just going to finance the whole thing? No, guess what? No, no right or wrong answer. Okay. Um, that's it for that. I want to talk a little bit about marketing direct mail and direct marketing. Oh, good. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna patch them in? Oh, cool. I do direct mail. Um, do a benefit. This is for secondary market, an event we do next month in Washington, D.C. And give them something reason for this. And what we do on the top is we say invitation for SBA secondary market stakeholders. So I am telling them what is the benefit for them right off the bat. And the benefit is discover new approaches for deals, profits, and risk avoidance in SBA secondary markets. So they're getting an invitation off this. They're being told the benefit of why they should go. I am on the board of a, uh, of a nonprofit and we did a fundraiser and it says, serving hope this Thanksgiving. Well, that doesn't do anything for me. Why, you know, that's nice. What's my call to action? And then it says, did you know 100% of families who utilize our pot pantry services fall well before the federal poverty line? Okay, fine, but you've lost me already. Do not send out tombstones. Do not say, hey, I just financed uh, $250,000 loan to Gray Strikely. That doesn't do anything. Rather, turn it around and say, did you know that I, if you are in the market to acquire a business, call me because I just did this deal. Make it more personal, extend the benefit. The benefit is I can finance your business. Be very blunt about that. If you're telling me that I financed Gray's, I don't care. But if you, but if you turn around and say, Bob, I, do you want to buy a business? I can take care of you. Now you got my attention. So be very specific about making it a benefit-driven piece. This piece cost me a buck to send out. I do it through my local printer. I send it out first class. We have mailing list. Um, I'm not picky about how often to do it. There are companies online where you can upload them, have them do it. I, if your bank will underwrite it, I would take advantage of that. Um, I, I experiment. Sometimes I send out twice a month. Sometimes I don't do any. They do work for us. That's why I do it. I know. I don't know what happened, but somehow my wife got on the list for these online lenders for debt consolidation on her credit cards. I get two, three offers a day from these people. There's a reason why they're still sending out two or three offers a day. They work. And they're all about benefit. Hey, refinance your, you know, the benefit is, do you want a lower monthly payment? Well, yeah, who doesn't want it? So that, they're, they're stressing benefits. <clears throat> um, in terms of layout, you can hire someone to do it. On, it used to be called Elance, but I haven't used them in a while. But you can get a graphic artist. Joseph got a logo done. How much was that logo, Joseph? 75 bucks? How much? We got a logo done in 24 hours for 100 bucks. There were, 20 and 20 people can be for it. What, what was the name of that company? Logo Design. Logo Design. You can, get, you can have someone, if your bank won't do this, you can have someone lay it out for literally 100 bucks. Um, you do it yourself. I'm not too excited about from, at the BDO level of how this looks. Obviously, 
I, I paid to have someone do this. Um, but the copy has to be a benefit. Joining high-level stakeholders from banks, investors, and government to explore new approaches for deals, profit, and risk mitigation, SBA secondary markets. That's your benefit. Oh, discuss the hottest issues that will affect your new business development and challenges from burgeoning SBIC opportunities and regulatory tightening to loan structuring in the face of interest rate fluctuations and debates about 504 versus 7A financing. So I'm telling them what the benefit is. So give them the benefit. The benefit is Bob, small business owner, Long Beach real estate um, holder, you want to, I am the expert in refinancing real estate debt in Southern California. And if you want to lower your payments and deal with someone who can process this loan quickly, efficiently, inexpensively, call me. That is much more effective than, hey, I just financed Debbie's vet place for $2.5 million and show me a picture of a dog. I get that stuff every day. You probably do too. So don't tell me you did Debbie's $2.5 million. Bob, are you a vet who needs to refinance your note? I can lower your payment. I, I can get you cash. Uh, I, I've done this before, and, um, and, and uh, we just did, I just did this with Debbie over in Long Beach. Make that. Um, the problem with direct mail takes a lot of time, and I understand that. I do not believe direct mail needs to be as consistent as email, which I'm going to talk about next. Problem is, if you send it out once, it may or may not help. But the, the advantage with direct mail is what? I get this. I'm going to look at it. Oh, thank you. I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to toss it. And that's okay, as opposed to an email with what? I'm going to delete it without ever reading it. So um, I prefer oversized cards. I prefer to send them first class. I want them large. You, you, got, you all get yourself. You can, do it. you can do the smaller postcards. You can do it at a cheaper rate. You can probably get your cost down to 50, 60 cents. Your list are going to be small, a couple hundred. So I would pay the money and, and do this. Uh, there's online services to do it. My, my local printer does this. He, and he ended up being cheaper than the online services. So all these, all your local printers, they, they want to do this stuff. Um, and this campaign worked. Uh, we, we sent out two direct mail pieces, and our registrations are up over 50% this year. So done correctly, it can work. Um, let's see, we have a question. Oh, Lance Sexton, yes, you need to submit an express loan form to your district director. They will submit it to headquarters who will approve it. Very good. All the documentation is in the 5010-5H. So. Let's talk about email. If I was talking to you two, last year, two years ago, I would I would strongly encourage you to develop your email list. I, I am, if you're going to do email, be consistent. That's absolute cardinal rule. Whether it's okay, you know, I do it daily. Um, I used to do it two times a day. I cut back. I cut back because my numbers were going down. And I was concerned about that. And then I didn't get too concerned about my numbers going down because on one hand my, my email opens were going down but my revenues were going up. So I was, I didn't understand that. The problem with doing two emails a day, it takes a lot of time. And I wasn't getting the benefit of it. So we, cut, we went from two emails to one email a day. We all have email overload. Unless you can own a space and own something that people want to read, I wouldn't do it. I think it's a complete waste of time to say, hey, I just got a $2.5 million loan to Debbie, to, to Debbie, to our vet. No one cares. The same thing about email applies to what I said. You've got to give me the benefit. And you better give it to me in the subject line. And you better hook me in the first second and a half or it's not going to happen. In the past, we would have done something along the lines of, 
SBA Form 159, uh, or, but this is underwriting. Yeah, uh, projections underwriting webinar. Now we're putting the benefit right up front in the subject line. New SBA suspicion of borrower projections may trigger repairs and guarantee denials protect runners. Well, I, yeah, I want to do that, as opposed to how to underwrite projections. Introducing seven best practices to ensure you pass SBA screening. What we're doing is we're telling them the benefit right off the top. And this is our email, and those are the subject lines. So again, I could care less that you financed a loan. Um, but, you know, I, but craft it where I offer refinancing solutions for, for commercial real estate owners in Long Beach. I am, uh, how, to, how can Long Beach vet, veterinarians get cash out of their business? Well, yeah. That's a benefit. If I call you, you're telling me I can get cash out, I can lower my payments, I can, uh, I can solve my working capital problems. So tell me what the benefit it is of working with you. Don't, don't give me a tombstone. Now, there's two types of marketing. There's branding and there's call to actions. If, if you want to do the branding, and Wells Fargo does this and say, hey, we're small business loan experts, Fine, that's a branding thing, and therefore, uh, somewhere down the line, if I ever want a loan, I go, oh, you know what? A couple of years ago, Wells Fargo said they were a small business loan expert. Maybe I need to go home. Um, but I, in our corner of the world, you should not do, be doing branding. You should not be saying, I am the expert of refinancing hotels in Texas. You know, but are you a hotel owner in Texas who needs to lower their monthly payments? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I want, or do you, do you, are you a hotel owner who needs to comply with new a, ADA, American Disabilities Act, for uh, pool equipment? Well, yeah, okay, that's the benefit. I call you, you're going to solve my problem. Um, are you a Holiday Inn franchise owner who is, um, who must face 500,000 must face the uh, capital infusion required by the brand uh, within two years. Yeah, I've got to come up with 500,000 and renovate this place. That is what you need to do. I would, my recommendation for you is this. LinkedIn, 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 LinkedIn. Become the expert on LinkedIn. Do a weekly thing, post in groups. And remember, the advantage to your group is I do a post. It goes to everyone in that group. Coleman, we have a couple thousand. So you post in, in the Coleman group that you're a vendor uh, that you want to sell, that you have a solution how BDOs can better manage their time. Uh, oh, that, that may be interesting for me. Um, it, it, so that goes to everybody in the group. So be careful with this. You don't want to have a reputation of a spammer, but you want to be a thought leader. I'm following the minimum wage and how that affects restaurants. So if I had a product that I wanted to sell to restaurant owners, I would, I would go in, but I, I would not say, hey, we have this really cool <clears throat> guide on how to get a restaurant loan. Rather, I, was, I would establish myself as being a, a thought leader of, hey, here's an interesting analysis of what the $15 minimum wage is doing to restaurants in Seattle and how that could impact you in Omaha. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm worried about that. I would focus on it. <clears throat> the second thing I would do is I would do the postcards. You can do it cheaply. You can, and the nice thing about that, you can send it out to 15 people. So if you have 15 solid referrals or you have a list of, um, you, you get a list of all the hotel owners in um, Tyler, Texas. And there's 21 of them. You can do a very specific campaign to those in Tyler, Texas. I, if you have the time after that, then I would experiment with email. But in today's day and age, unless you have a strategy to cut to the clutter, I wouldn't do email. I, I, would, I, I wouldn't do it. Um, because I get a lot of emails from a lot of videos announcing that they've done all these wonderful things, 
delete, no offense, but there's no benefit, delete, delete, delete. And unless you can overcome that, I wouldn't waste your time. And that's my sermon. Hey guys, open up for questions. What can I do for your questions? Oh, I want to go back to this direct mail piece on, on my on this. What I want to know is, I could care less that I mean I and I, I don't mean to be rude, but this is a nice story on Rosemary that 100% of our of our um, guests are below poverty, and we're going to serve Thanksgiving dinners. It doesn't get down to the bottom that. Um, would you be able to feed and meet your family's needs for only $235 a month? Okay, that's interesting. That's, that's a call to action. Uh, can I feed, when I had three teenagers in the house, can I feed them for $235? Uh, no. So that's, I would have put this up at top and say, hey, the benefit to you, Bob, is do you want to make a difference in your local community by giving to these families and giving them money so they can feed their teenagers. Now, now you are calling me to action, and the benefit is, do you, do you want to be part of the solution? Yeah, I want to be part of the solution. I don't want people in the streets. I don't want people to starve. And Bob, you can be part of the solution for only $50. Where do I sign up? Anyway, so benefit, benefit, not features. You know, a feature is, we, we feed these people. Yeah, and that's nice. A feature is I could do a, vet, I could do a veterinary loan. I do vet loans. The benefit is I can lower your payments. I can get you cash out. Um, I can solve your cash flow problems. All right. Steve. Steve, what can I do for you? I don't hear Steve. Uh, he's unmuted, so... If you have questions, send them in. Uh, I can't hear you, Steve. I don't know if it's at our end or your end. You're talking oh. to me? Hey, there you go. You got a question for me, Steve? Uh, no, I didn't write anything. I'm not sure. Uh -oh. Oh, I, oh, someone said you had a question. That's okay. Um, what's, uh, what did you think about what I said? That was great. I, I've been reading uh, on your uh, and I also got to uh, I think jo Joseph. I uh, appreciate for doing the thirty minute because I was a miss last week. Uh, but uh, I've been reading your and I noticed you put it up down here. You talking about projections or triggering repairs. I really like reading those and I, and I noticed that you send some information on some of the attorneys and, and other experts, industry experts, different parts of the SBA process. And I find those to be very useful uh, because it, it it quickly can I can read and say oh yeah and then refer back to the to the SOP for questions that I've got. So. Uh, keep sending them. I love the uh, I love the the weekly, uh, I guess daily updates. Maybe I'm getting too many of them. I get them daily. I noticed you said you yeah, only sent so, one. Yeah, we, we were doing two. Now we're doing one a day. So we come back <laughs> because the numbers don't lie. The numbers are showing that people weren't reading them, and we're spending a lot of time writing this stuff and, and making it look good. So we cut back to one, and it's quality content. So we cut back to one a day, and we try to make it as as um, useful as as possible. Okay. Great. Thanks for your comments. Uh, let's see. Next week, I am out of town. I'm in Fort Lauderdale. Lucky me. <laughs> giving a speech. Actually, what you you got you guys would be interested in this. I'm giving a speech to a bunch of publishers on how to do e-training. So it's, it's there. And then what we'll do is when we come back on um, the 20th, I hope that that is the week before Thanksgiving. I'm going to talk about BDO productivity and wrap up um, just just to wrap up the course for 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 everyone. Um, as you can tell, this is a passion. I, I, there, there's all of all of the jobs are important, but I'm passionate about you know what if, if loans don't come into the door, people don't have jobs and banks don't make money. So I am passionate about this part of the process. And you know what? They better be done right. If you have an SBA loan, they better have a guarantee and they better be quality loans. We want to pay back. So what you are doing is absolutely critical and uh, the most important job. Because if you're not out there doing your job, uh, the backroom doesn't have jobs, Main Street doesn't need capital, banks not making money, shareholders aren't happy, people get fired. But I lay it on thick enough. All right. I've enjoyed it. Enjoy the weekend. I'll talk to you in two weeks.